The starting class you want is Cruel Fate because it starts off with the uh, highest amount of arcane. <laughs> uh, you need anything? Love arcane? Yeah. Weirdest for life, welcome in. So I was kind of debating back and forth whether I wanted to use like the more speed, kind of the speedier route, or use the more kind of more consistent route. I think I'll go for the more consistent route because I don't think speed really matters that much now that there's not like all bosses plus DLC plus chalices attached to it. Let's do good starting writing the burn percent. Oh, nice. Okay, so, classic, try to backstab the werewolf. Got him. Alright, gonna save those bullets for later. Pick them up later after <clears throat> we come back to get the flames rare. Okay, so I'm actually going to pick up those Molotovs over there um, later when we get the Flame Sprayer so we can kill everything in this area. It's just safer than having to risk resetting, just trying to pick them up right off, right off the bat. Okay, Hunter's Dream. So, we're gonna pick up the Hunter's Axe, because that sells for the most Echoes, and Hunter Pistol. Take off most of your clothes, you can take it all off, but I prefer to keep the pants on. And we're gonna sell Hunter Axe and the rest of your clothes to buy 11 Molotovs from the shop. Best trade ever? Yep. Book him in Slender. So the big thing about arcane runs is since every spell that we use uses bullets, we're going to be taking advantage of this mechanic called blood bullets a lot. You just press up on the uh, D-pad to take a little bit of health off your HP bar, and you'll get five bullets. This is so that you don't have to dip into your quick silver bullets too quickly, because there will be times where you need to spam away at your spell, and you need to have a large source of quick silver bullets at your at your disposal. On NG plus four, yeah. So I'm kind of creating this guide kind of with the assumption that someone's already done the normal any percent, so I'm mostly only going to talk about the stuff that's specific to the arcane run. Best arcane weapon? Um, technically the best arcane weapon is the cost parasite because it actually it has the best scaling with arcane, but it's also a very shitty weapon, so. Really, there isn't any good arcane weapon. You're gonna mostly rely on hunter tools. Oh, a hunter, are you? What am I? So, personally, I like to talk to Eileen a second time to get this shake off ch cape gesture to replace the sit down one, so you don't accidentally sit down at any point in the run. 
And the tools, um, the most powerful spell is the, is the, is, is a call beyond, but, but really like every single tool you can find good use for. I haven't found the button. Um, it is the right side of the trackpad. No, wait. It's the left side of the trackpad. Quick hi before bed. Thank you, Camilla. Appreciate it. So right now we're heading off to get the music box for Gascoigne. Because that's what strat we're going to be using for him. You didn't know you could click it? Yeah. You can get two different menus depending on which side you click. Okay, picking up the music box off of Gascoigne's daughter here. We're also opening this gate so that we can loop around to pick up these oil urns for Gascoigne. This is when I prefer to pick up these Maltovs, so that if we pick them up earlier, we'll be at a deficit, considering that we had to use three to get past this troll and the crows. Good luck with the runs. Thank you, Camilla. Appreciate it. Is the Tento attack? The Tentacle attack is really good. I love the Augur. Okay, so 10 bullets right there, you want to pick them up, because you're going to want to pick up as many, many bullets as you can in this run. This is a trick I learned, I think it was off Dewfish. Have them all cloistered together to save on Maltovs. So I'm making more blood bullets right now, so that will be have plus five for ready for gas going. Love that dew strat, yeah. Actually, let me make sure I have it all on. Yeah, we want the oil urns and then the music box. Gotta go at twelve fifteen. That's fine. Appreciate you stopping in whenever you could. Oh, you gotta share your laptop with your brother? Oh, that sucks. So Gascoigne's going to be the, uh, music box and Molotov backstab. Backstab strat. Again. Okay, music box. Get your oil worms ready. Okay. And with a combination of oil urn, backstab, and Maltov, you can just finish them off right there. For the GG. 
What upgrades visceral attacks? It's skill, slender. Thank you guys for the GG's, I appreciate it. You're doing the correct build? Good. So, don't need to open up that chest because it's the gem workshop tool and we can't use gems at any point in this run. So pe people all have their different ways on getting uh, enough um, bloodstone shards for whatever weapon they're using. I prefer to go up this way through Upper Cathedral Ward and then we can have enough to plus three our flame spray when we get it. So parry, visceral him, and then finish him off with gunshots. So I wait until he keeps walking it and then turns around and then it's safe to uh, pick up this shard here and then run right past him. Regenerate stamina right about here and then just keep running through and behind the bench here. Grab these and then just start jogging. Stay about as far away from this giant as you possibly can. That's how you can pick up enough bloodstone shards for your flame sprayer without ever waking up this guy. So we're going to go back to the Dream to get our Flame Sprayer. Specifically back to Central Yarnum, but of course you got to go back to the Dream to get anywhere, to anywhere in this game. So Gilbert's the one who will give us the flame sprayer, just want to mash through his dialogue. And you can already use it like right off the bat. Again, blood bullets. I wait until he's right about just walking back from... Like just walking back from this carriage here. That way you're far enough when you jump down that when he goes to attack you, he'll just miss you right up. What is Arcane? It's basically the magic of this game. And thank you, Astarte. Appreciate that. Okay, and now we can pick up these bullets here. The reason we didn't pick them up earlier is when you first get your gun, the game will already award you 10 bullets if you don't already have any in your inventory. So that's why I like to save these for later on our trip back through here to get the flame sprayer. Just a way to uh, get an extra 10 bullets. Okay, so get any mollies out of storage, and then we're going to upgrade the flame sprayer to plus three. I like to get one pungent here, and most of Gascoigne set, pretty much everything but the chess piece. This gives us more... Hmm. 
Yeah, that's right. It gives us more poison resistance from BSB. Hello, Very well. We're selling all of that, we can get up to a 19 arcane. Arcane is the only is the only stat you'll be leveling up in this entire run. You need 40 for the cult? Yep, you do. And we get that very early on. So I'm going to switch over to the gun, because we're about to face a dog. Okay, see ya, Slender. Okay, so, so we walk up here, stay behind the tree, and toss. Good. Okay, there's four more Molotovs here that will replace the ones that you just used on everyone in here. And this guy in here can hit you if you jump down from the balcony up there, so I like taking him out now. Get our gun ready for the two dogs up the stairs. So right about here is we'll get their attention but without alerting the gunman. If you're lucky enough, they'll usually just run right into the fire, but this way you can pick them off one by one. I find it to be more consistent than trying to hit them at the staircase. no reason to talk to Alfred right now because we won't have any use for the fire paper he would give us. Still fun in NG+, albeit a bit slowish. Yeah. Thanks Barrier is actually a pretty decent weapon all around. It definitely serves us well in the arcane run. hiding out over here. Keep an ear out to see if the werewolf followed us. He did not. here. This is a posi strat, throwing a pungent here to keep these guys off your back when you come down here and wait for this guy to walk right behind those statues. This keeps you safe from getting like slashed by them. And jumping down on that pillar helps so that you can go get down off that building without getting hit by the Gatlin gun ever, even if you get a hard drop. Okay, I have to throw 
throw a punch in here. Since this is such a resource heavy run, you kind of want to pick up most bullets and vials that are on your way and that are safe to get. So that way you don't have to spend too many echoes just buying them from the store. Okay, just run past him. You can usually just run straight past him without any problem. The only time is if he like strafes and body blocks you. In that case, you just run around, run right, right, run around him. Um, backstab openings. This is one. Just, you can just strafe to her left side. And that's the other one. I like to dodge it just to be safe so that you don't get like caught. Emery, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate it. Okay. Still gonna make blood bullets so we don't go through the quicksilver bullets too quickly. on a no-hit guide right now for Arcane. Why are you not using Pungies? Um, Pungents... Okay, so she ran away too, too far and I don't trust getting there in time to do the backstab, so that, when that happens you want to run to the opposite side of the room so that when the AoE gets let off, you don't get caught up in this um, poison cloud that rapidly builds up poison. So Pungence, it just makes her act weird and she can act in a very chaotic behavior and you just can get hit without realizing what happens. It's more consistent to do it without. I used to use pungents in the in like in the corner like everyone else did, and like it works. You can just you just sort of chuck them in there and just spray with the flame sprayer. But again, she she can act really erratically. Send that down. standard here we're gonna grab the grab the doll set and the and the hunter bone to sell to the shop
for echoes, I like to kill this guy, do a backstab, and just use flame sprayer, and he just dies. Just to be perfectly safe with this dog, I also prefer to throw a pungent here. Yeah, Jurio. I'm doing my best. Um, We'll, we'll just see how it turns out. I've been I've been needing to do it to do this for like a year. Okay, so I open up this gate because we're not going to go straight to Vicar Amelia, so, and we're just going to wait for these guys to go up the staircase a little more. We're off to go get the twin bloodstone shard near the brain sucker because we want to have a plus four for Vicar Amelia. One for the crow. This brain sucker, you want to keep an eye out to see what exactly he's doing. Like, if you go in, like, just chucking away at Maltovs, he can, like, start, like, start off with running directly to you, and the, and the Maltov will just go right over his shoulder, and in your recovery animation from the Maltov throw, he'll just grab you. So just keep an eye out on him to see what exactly he's doing before you start chucking away. Okay, so up here we want to go through this little entrance here to get to the top of the little top balcony in this little in the cathedral ward here. Because right here there's a formless Odin rune that will let us carry more bullets. We can get a second one here by killing the chapel dweller. Um, not really necessary on any percent though, but it's there's an option if you choose to do so. Okay, so pick up any more Maltons you might have in storage. Uh, my Tom, thank you so much for the follow, I appreciate it. Welcome in. Flames ready to plus four. I'm going to buy the rest of gas going set and spend the rest on pungents. So Hunter Bone, Ritual Blood, and the Doll set, along with gas going set. So, as we approach Vicar Amelia, we want at least six Maltovs on you. Uh, we have eight, so I don't need to buy any more. Blood bullets ready. Welcome. What? Very well. Let me stand again. Just put, put everything into arcane. Farewell. Crash cathedral ward. So an effort to have like more like safety gestures for lack of a better word. I talked to Eileen here to replace yet another gesture for something that can you can at least move around with in if you accidentally trigger. This guy, I and then kill. Then I throw one Molotov on him. Finish him off with the gun. And this guy we parry in this roll. Here I try to get these two attention. Keep them from going up the staircase. And 
I wait for uh, this giant to walk past. Walk past this little entrance here. Okay, two mollies kills this guy. Look behind you, because sometimes one of the uh, church servants will follow you up here and then start attacking you. But that's not what's happening today. And then two more mollies on this guy. And that's how you can progress through this area right before Vicar Melia safely. Vicar Amelia is mostly just We do stagger we do we do stagger her limbs, but it's not enough to like keep her locked down and kill her like you can on a standard no-hit run. So most of this fight is just learning the fight. So that time it did not uh, break her limb, which happens. Basically, we want to be around mid range to help try to bait out uh, jump attacks. Then it's safe to always keep an eye out to. It's. Yeah. Baiting out the jump attack is when it's safe to actually go in and attack the limbs. Okay, so she's going to be healing right now. If you want to, you can go get the uh, Numbing Mist if you don't want to deal with this, but you can do enough damage with the Flame Sprayer to not really make it necessary. Into Angerus in the Arcane Hitless Run? Yeah. Like... I gotta admit, I'm kind of struggling like with what advice to give for a lot of the early bosses, because most of it is just taking the time to like really learn the fights. But Vicar Amelia dead, we're gonna go straight to the dream, not touch the skull. That's important. We have to go straight to the dream first. Because if we touch the skull, that will advance the knight forward and prices in the shop will be more expensive. But if we go to the dream like directly after killing Vicar Amelia, the prices will still be lower. So we want about 35 Maltovs. Sell the wooden shield and then put everything else into put all the rest of the insight into pungence. But yeah, so it is pretty dangerous in the very beginning. I've I've just gotten used to it. You don't level at this point? No, there's it's more important to get to get a lot of Molotovs because we're gonna be using a lot of it for the next uh, couple sections. So for example, right now we're gonna actually uh, get to how much charnel lane. And the levels that we get from all the enemies we're going to kill in Hemlock Charnel Lane and the Forbidden Woods, it's going to more than make up for the Echoes we did not level with Amelia.
So right about at this tree, we shoot the gun to get his attention. Shoot again, and then throw a Molotov. Good luck, Ghost. Thank you, Toasty. So we can jog over here, right about around the tree. We can throw a Molotov here. And from here, we gotta make sure we slow walk. Right around these tombstones. And just right about past this kind of this little diamond patch of grass, we throw another Molotov. More slow walking. Walk, uh, walking slow prevents the uh, other enemies from being able to see us. Because we have to do how much charnel lane so early, the reason we're even doing this is so that we can get that Executioner Glove from Castle Kanehurst. Because they're going to be necessary for both... For... For Shadows, One Reborn, Mikolash... What am I talking about? For Shadows, Rom, and uh, Mikolash, and Wet Nurse. Uh, Dionis, thank you so much for the follow, I appreciate it. Okay. Wanna... You're lucky you can get all three at once. But since we have to go through Helmet Charnel Lane so early, we have to... We have very limited amounts of blue elixirs to use. In fact, I like to get this part out of the way, so that... This is this can be a, a reset point here, but I found that it's usually pretty consistent. So run through, stay away from that one. Generate stamina. Loop around her. Generate stamina. You want a full stamina bar for when you get up here. Looks scary, but after giving it a couple of runs through yourself, and you'll notice it's actually pretty consistent. Why not using blues now? Because we only have four, and I used to use blue elixirs there, but there are four other spots in the game where we really need to use them. So. We're actually is we're gonna actually mark out right now and go back to Forbidden Woods because we do not have the means to actually continue through Hematronal Lane at the moment. But I like to get I like to do this run through early on so that if we were to get like bad RNG and get hit, it would only be like in the first thirty minutes of the run instead of like an hour in. So back to the dream, we'll pick up all the Molotovs we have in storage. Okay, back to Cathedral Ward. Safe run past these guys. I'm gonna put that antidote up for the. We're gonna have to run through a poison swamp pretty soon. 
So that'll be useful. over here for this guy. The molly's ready for the guy on the bridge. I have to wait until it goes like... <clears throat> kind of just over the hump of the bridge. I want to save Molly, so if you miss one, you just got to finish off with the Flame Sprayer. This guy we're just going to kill with the Flame Sprayer. Okay. Is it hanging? Hey Cosmo. Working on an any percent uh, arcane no-hit guide. I have no idea how well it's going, but it's been something I've been needing to do for, like, a year now, so just finally decided to do it. going well with you, Cosmo. Okay, so important here is that we need to talk to the guy in this hut. This is uh, Patches, and he's going to give us something called Tonsil Stone, and that's going to be very important in us getting the Augur of Evriatus in the next about 10 minutes. So I kill all these dogs, and then go in here to get the blue elixirs. If you try to go in here before killing the dogs, they'll the gates will open and you'll be like hounded by four dogs in that small room. The gun ready, switch over to the Molotovs. We're actually gonna go around this way instead of going through like the oil river. Okay. So pungence on this rock. This, uh, certain amygdala, yes. Yeah. Which we'll see in just a moment. Okay, so right about here, we want to start slow walking. Get more blood bullets. Okay, so take him out first. Malt off here, then finish him off with flame sprayer. things go awry, you want to make sure you always have at least one more Molotov left for this enemy right on the bridge. Right about here, you can lock on and throw a molly right through these trees because they have no collision, but he can do the same to you as well, so you want to make sure you take him out with the molly. Okay. That got a little scuffed, but we're good. And there's 11 Molotovs here. Put them on. Yeah. 
Not really, Renella. So, I want to have our stamina collected here and then just run through. Hey, NHL fan. arcade that we're at we can actually kill this guy in just three Maltovs instead of like uh, five. He has a habit of strafing a lot of them but at time it was fine. here. Never had that camera angle before. That was scary. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till he turns around. So now we're looping back through because we want to go to Yusefa's clinic now to get the uh, Kanehar summon. here. Oh. Two rich, um, cold bloods you can pick up here. The danger noodles here? Oh, you mean the uh, little worms? Yeah. They've never gotten me before, but sometimes they will jump at you. Okay, so back through here. Gonna be another brain sucker, but we'll take him out with Maltovs. What, Maximus? So back through here is the Kanehar summons. Pick that up, and we can also gonna kill this Yusefa here to get the vial. And then with that, we can go to go to the lecture hall to get the Augur of Ebrietus. Check, check to make sure you still have the tonsil stone. Good. And then back to the Grand Cathedral. Hey, Marcy.
Fist of Gratia guide and win. Do not... Do not expect many more guides from me. Hey, Garhole. Welcome in. Alright, so we want to go to the left here. Hey, York Morgan. Welcome in. Okay, so... You can jog, just don't make sure you don't actually sprint, otherwise you, you will get the attention of that hunter. And you want to wait right about here. You want to wait for an attack. A, like, physical attack from this enemy. Dodge it, and then you can safely run past him. Ooh, elixir here. This is what we use one of our four. Kill all the gunmen. run through. Don't deal with the executioners all, just run past them. Don't even try to get those so so shards there either. And you're gonna get grabbed by the amygdala right here. And because we have the tonsil stone in our inventory, we're gonna actually be transported to the lecture hall, bottom floor. And since we we treat this, um, like, instance of damage as similar to how we treat it, treat the one that we get to go into the DLC, which is just required, so it's not going to count as a hit. So go through here to get the Lecture Hall Theater Key. Student set here also, if you need to want to sell that. And with the Lecture Hall Theater Key, you can open up this other door right around here. And right here we're going to use our second blue elixir. Jog over here. Then run around. And with that, you can safely get the Augur of Ebriatus. What arcane do you use for Gascoin? Welcome and kill more. Well, we use Molotovs and Backstabs, basically, and Viscerals and stuff like that. So it's actually very similar to what a lot of people do with their no-hit runs with Gascoin. Because we don't really have, like, Molotovs are literally the only, like, arcane leveling. Yeah, Fist Backstab, like, no weapon. Okay, and with that, we're going to go back to Hematrana Lane, slot in the auger. We're also going to put the oil urn on for one specific enemy. At this point, we'd like to you know, level up with the doll. Very well. Get us up to 38. Farewell. Blood bullets. Technical blunt punch. Yep, that's what we got. Back to Hematrana Lane. So this is a... Kind of a rough spot to get through without blue elixirs, but... I've scienced it out pretty thoroughly at this point. <laughs> the auger of the ready. Her wide berth. And we're gonna go up the elevator that we uh, sent down our first trip through. The noodle arm attack? Yeah. So loop around here and try to get the lock on, and right about now, use auger. So the auger is something that just kind of takes time and practice to get a feel for, like, the right time to use it. So right about... Right about here is when we want to reach this guy. Okay, wait for her to throw a Molotov. Want to be decently far away from her. The noodle arm thankfully has a lot of range. Well, the auger. 
because you don't want to get hit. If you get too close to her, you, you run the risk of getting hit by her cleaver. So if there is a hunting dog there, we're going to throw a pungent. Then up the ladder. What's the fire spell you get? The noodle arm attack? Uh, the fire spell, so we use the flame sprayer, like that's that's the fire damage we we deal, and the noodle arm is this is the Augur of Ebrietus right here. So gotta wait till we get her attention. Good. Run through here. And you have enough time to throw a molly on this girl. Okay, and now we're going to get our oil urn ready for this rock troll coming back. Toss. This is the... basically the safest way to handle this one particular enemy. Okay, so you want to keep an eye out for that um, hag there. You want to make sure she's behind the tree before you get too close. Just doing witches to equip runes. Actually, no kill more. We're doing this to get to Kanehurst in order to get the Executioner Gloves, another hunter tool. Which is going to be like essential for the rest of the run. So now we want to wait back right about here. We're going to wait until the dog turns around and then aggro's. Never raided the auger until I saw the Maria cheese with it. Ah. We had, we, for our arcane all content, we use the auger on it. On Maria. Okay, so he'll be getting his attention pretty soon. Okay. Wait for an attack. Shoot. Okay. I'm gonna switch back to auger and. Just like, you don't even need to go very far up to get her attention. Now, this girl's also kind of scary because it's kind of hard to stay away from her while being able to shoot her. But right about there is what you want. What run are you doing today? Um, right now we're actually working on the um, an arcane no-hit guide for any percent. And honestly, if the run goes pretty well... I might just keep going. Okay, so right about here. You want to time that so you can... You're still like far enough away that you won't get hit by the tag, but still close enough to aggro him. So he's going to turn around. We're going to get closer to him and then shoot him. If he's guard, okay. So if he's if he has his guard up, it'll take about two shots from the auger to kill him. But if he they're not guarding at all, then it takes only one. And with these enemies, you want to approach them from behind. I definitely don't want them to be able to see you, and because it takes time to um to use the auger, and if they have enough time to see you and and then try to attack, you'll usually end up trading. So right here, we're going to wait until all three of these women come down the hill and then walk back up. Around this time, you can uh, pop all these cold blood. But a Sasuke, we will actually, um, depending how far this run goes, um, we'll probably move back to the um, Kirk Hammer no hit. Okay, so right about now, this woman in the back is the most important one to uh, take out because she can throw Molotovs at you. So we're going to run back down the hill. And I go all the way down and make sure you break these urns because they have gunpowder in them. And if you were to uh, throw a Molotov near these women and again have that explode, all those dogs over there will be alerted and follow you here. Fire! Fire! 
So right now we are heading off to the Witches of Hemwick, and the reason we're doing that is because simply having like the Kaner summons isn't actually enough to go to Castle Kanehurst. Like, as you can see right now, if we go over here, it's not doing anything. Because you actually have to kill the Witches of Hemwick too, in order for the carriage that takes you to Kanehurst to show up. So you have to have both. Good information? Okay, I'm glad that it's proving to be informative for ya. Otherwise, I would just be going directly to Kanehurst right now, but sadly, we, we do have to kill the witches. So, wait until this guy summons in, and go ahead and have zero insight. Yeah, we're, um, that's exactly what we're doing. We're marking out to go back to the dream and dump our insights. Finally, you want this guide? Doing the best I can, Posy. And also, congrats on your run. I got your, uh, your whisper. What... What are you up to next? Okay, so first things first, we want to make sure we dump our insight, because that's the reason we're here. I have tried to kill the witches with the Mad Men still about, but our damage is just not good enough to make it consistent. Probably DS1 or this. Let's get our more Maltovs. The Alga ready, and we're going to level up with the doll again. We want... This is the first time where we really want a specific arcane number, which is 40. We could go over, but I like to keep it at 40. And Because that's going to let us kill each witch with... Two backstabs, two punishes, and then just one auger shot, and that makes it a lot more consistent. Because that way you don't have to try to pull off three backstabs. You're gonna do sorcery. Ooh. I know you were not a fan of Dark Souls 1 when you were running it previously. I, uh, whoops. I went to the Forbidden Woods. We have to go back to Hamwick. Okay. So back to Hamwick Charnel Lane. Now, for this run through, we actually can use a blue elixir. So if you were wanting to save it for another area in the game, you could. It's just as consistent to run through this time as it was earlier. But I like to use a blue elixir just for any edge cases. Loop around her. We'll use the blue elixir to get a chance to sneak up on this guy. Okay, so that guy is coming down the hill, and we'll definitely see us if, if we try to attack him now. So we're gonna wait behind these tombstones and wait for him to go back up the hill. Okay, good. Melee sucks in that game. <laughs> Honestly, DS1 is just not a game I have any interest in running at all, period. Okay, so again, we're gonna wait here until the witch, the, the women come down the hill. Two words. Welcome in, trusty. Get good. We're trying. Okay. So 
So same strat as before, just gonna run all the way down, break the urns, just to be safe. Hey, Trussy. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so I like to wait until they, like, leash. Sometimes they'll... they get a bit more aggressive and come to you and try to attack, like I think this one is. So I kind of wait for one attack, like, just for them to perform a attack, and then you can safely throw a Molotov. Okay, so the Madman will not be in the fight. We're gonna go over here first. And Augur. Punish again. Now, it's usually safe to go right ahead and hit her a second time. Occasionally, she will do an AoE attack instead, so just keep an eye out on what she's doing. Before you go commit to doing another backstab. So we're just gonna wait out. Yeah, just want to wait out those uh, little blue attacks. Yeah, this is all. Actually, this is the only part where I get scary is that the way she rotates can make it hard for you to actually um, land the backstab. But for the most part, it goes about it goes about that smoothly. And we do get the benefit of getting the rune tool right now because we do have to kill the witches. It's not the reason we're here, but it's a nice bonus. And since we have, we've killed the witches and have the Kanehurst summons on hand, we can walk back down and go to Kanehurst right now. So, Pazza, were you saying earlier that you wanted to do the arcane run? Alright, so we get the lamp here. And we're gonna path through... Basically trying to stay up on, like, all of the uphill surfaces, because if we do it this way, we are less likely to have a blood liquor follow us to the door. And since you... Since the door opens automatically and you don't get iframes while it opens, you definitely don't want an enemy trailing you. Okay, Rider Palash is here and we will sell it for a fair amount of echoes. Death cam. Oh yeah, that would be pretty cool if you could do that. I would love to be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, you only get to kill Gascoin with the Augur on NG+. So I like to go on this side of the uh, room to get through. So because there's fewer um, uh, noble women there. Stamina regen and stay mostly to mostly to the edge to avoid getting grabbed. Skywalk, a little close up and shoot. I know there was like some kind of skip. Oh, I think it was actually um, like a save edit thing that you could do to like break her, his AI and just walk past him. Okay, so this is where we're going to use our final blue elixir. Setting this elevator down is actually not necessary on any percent, but muscle memory. Run through here. Evelyn is in here. So walk behind here first. Keep an eye out, because sometimes even if you're Blue Elixir, he'll aggro. And staying behind that... That little staircase will prevent you from getting hit by the uh, darts. And when he's, like, de-aggroed, you shoot him with uh, a gun to knock him off, and then he can't get you. 
And in here is the Executioner Gloves. Before Woods got patch, you probably could have done it. Oh yeah, it's true. So we have the Executioner Gloves, but... We're actually gonna go over here to get the night set. Are you teaching someone? Yeah, I'm trying to make a guide in general for this run, because people have been asking for like well over a year now. So I pick this up and I prefer to be all the way over here because the scream that this woman can like do has never gotten me, but it does have a grab mechanic to it. So I've always wanted to stay as far away from her as possible when marking out. And with that, we're finally able to take on shadows. Does the scream count as a hit? Yes, because if you get like the grab animation, like, that you know it's very similar to with when a blood when a brain sucker does it to you. Yeah, it will count as a hit. Welcome in Death Demon. So right now we are going to sell Rider Palash, Evelyn, Student Set, Knight Set, get a ton of Echoes that way. And since we have the Rune Workshop tool, we can actually put on this Formless Odin Rune. Our executioner gloves right now. Welcome. And we want to get our arcane to exactly 48. This is so that Farewell. we can we can cast executioner gloves on the pyromancer shadow exactly three times before like literally any other source of damage will move him into second phase, as well as move him into summoning snake phase in in second phase. So that's like that's this is the highest amount of damage we want to do in the fight. How much arcane okay, do you have? Right now, we, we just uh, leveled up to 48. Great, right, today, hey, Feverborn. Doing okay. Working on an arcane any percent hit, no hit guide at the moment. I think it's going okay. I'm not used to, like, doing guides like this so far, so I'm, like, really nervous on, on the. How well it is. Right, so we want to make that jump to get the um, Grave Guard set here. Did you do well? Thank you, Renoa. Appreciate that. So, have that enough stamina to run past this guy. A little shortcut here. So stay behind the tombstone for a bit, and then run past the pig. Now, you always keep a lookout on the pig, because he can actually follow you all the way down here and even into the shadow fight. It's rare, but it can happen. Okay, so make sure you have all five of your blood bullets up. So for this fight in particular, I prefer to... You're going to be spending a lot of time locking onto shadows, which means some shadows are going to be out of out of your line of sight. Because you're having to lock on to specific shadows in order to cast a spell. So in that so you're gonna to have to rely on sound effects more than you normally would, so I like to turn off the music and heighten the sound effects. Okay. So we're gonna go in. And start with an opening of one, two, and if, if, if the Pyromancer had not started casting there, we could have done three. But you want to make sure you keep an eye on the Pyromancer, because if he starts casting and you, you cast a third time, you're going to get hit by a fireball. So... Generally, there's there's no real trick to shadows. It's again, it's mostly just learning the fight. But keep an ear out for 
fireballs and all that. So right now I want to get in about at least one more cast on the pirate, on the on the melee shadow. I like to wait until he does a running attack and then cast the spell on his recovery because that usually when that happens he he takes all three hits. That time he ran right afterwards, so he did not. The tricky thing with um, Arcane and Shadows is that you're likely going to be casting, you're going to be dealing inconsistent damage with the Executioner Gloves, because sometimes not all three skulls will hit the target. So obviously do not cast while Pyromancer is throwing fireballs at you. Still want to wait out a uh, running attack. Okay, right there is good. That's an acceptable spot for the melee shadow. And now we're gonna move on to the pyromancer. And also, please notice that before every single cast I do, I always make blood bullets. Like, this is where blood bullets are really matter. This is where the blood bullets really start mattering in this run. Because otherwise you will run out of casts for this fight. So I like to bait out an attack from behind the graveyard, uh, the tombstone. So what happened there is that we weren't able to get a full cast. But we still only want to attack him two, two more times. So he's going to have um, more health in second phase than I would have preferred. But if we attack him, if we try to like make up the difference, we're just going to end up pushing second phase earlier than we want to. So we can only attack him one more time now. So another little thing that I do with shadows is that I never run in shadows. You might notice that my stamina bar has never gone down in this entire fight. I think it's uh... Okay, so that's it for a uh, Pyromancer. One more cast and we'll go into second phase. I think it's better to uh, save your stamina when you need it for rolling. So right now what I want to do is actually get a hit in on the Candle Shadow, which actually did work. Candle sh that, that is so that we have less health to deal with in second phase, because we are going to have to fight a little bit of second phase. And with that, all of the shadows are prepped. Now, now I'll run in the shadows, because I'm not looping around anymore. We go in here. Okay, I don't actually like how I don't like that the candle shadow is in front of the uh, melee shadow. Welcome in, Axe, by the way. Okay, I don't like really like that the pyromancer is like so close to the peninsula, but so it is what it is. We're gonna start spamming now. And we're going to take advantage. I like to cast only once. I mean, uh, twice there. Like, not actually finish him off right away. Because we want... We only need to fire one more shot on the Candle Shadow in order to kill, kill him. But we want the Candle Shadow and the Pyromancer to be pretty close to each other. Because when I go to kill the... Candle Shadow, I want to, be, like, immediately be able to attack the, uh, the Pyromancer, because, yeah, because what's different about, uh, the Arcane no-hit for sh Shadows is that we actually save the Pyromancer for last, because he goes down the fat the quickest. One, he goes down the quickest, and also, he's, like, the least dangerous. 
least dangerous in Snake Phase. Because with Candle Shadow, if you try to spam away to kill him, which you kind of need to in order to prevent him from summoning snakes, he can just do a little... He can just do a stab like that and hit you. And you don't really have any way to counteract it because you're just spamming away. Whereas you have more leeway with the Pyromancer. So right now I'm just trying to... I'm waiting for them to be closer together. Okay, so he actually did a very bad attack there, but... Thankfully, he did not start summoning right away. Okay. And that's how you get shadows. Ah, thank you for the GG. Alright, and that is... that was shadows. And we'll be moving on to... Rom now. So trying to get the uh, bug's attention. I like running him all the way over here where in this doorway because he can't actually e enter the doorway. And then we kill him with the auger. Hey Collins, welcome in. And Ratista, welcome in. So old habits die hard and picking up that madman's knowledge for no reason. So we're going to go back to the dream to um, get put more points into Arcane. Okay, so yeah, going to have to get more bullets. Don't need to get more... Uh, Files and we'll sell the Graveguard set now, too. Welcome. Okay, now we're free to put... Now we don't have to worry about specific levels anymore. We can just put everything into Arcane without... without... without issue. Bergenworth? Shoot him. Okay. And we can actually uh, reach him with the auger here. We don't even have to shoot him. Good. Take whatever he's got. Nice. So the one... So you, you may have put together that at this point we actually have no blue elixirs on us because we have to use so many early game. Whereas normally people would have about three right now. So we're going to get three more by killing Yuri and we actually have a cheese to make it perfectly safe to do so. Also, you might have noticed I got quiet as I entered the room. A good way to tell if Yuri is already aggroed and notices you is if you hear her transform her cane. If you hear like that little whip sound, you'll you'll know that she's already aw she's already aware of you being in the room and is already trying to kill you. So I'm waiting for her to go up the stairs. Knockback. What do you mean by knockback? Like, I'm not sure what you mean. So slowly walk. Up here. And you want to stand roughly... You see these little slats in the, uh... In the floor here? Right around in this patch here. Lock on and auger. And you're just going to just spam away, like... Don't... Don't pause at all. You want to make sure you're far enough away from her. So that, as you can see, you're inching closer every time you auger. If you get too close, she'll actually kind of ricochet into you and you'll stagger, and that'll count as a hit. <laughs> hey, Cuckwolf. And with that, you can get we can get three more blue elixirs. 
perfectly safe. Working on Bloodborne. Ooh, a Bloodborne story. Well, down consistently when you hit them with it. Um, it has. Yeah, it is a very good, very good poise break. It will often knock people down. Yeah, it's got really. It, it's, yeah, it, it wrecks shit. What do you have, Cuthwolf? Here's a neat little trick here. You jump down and roll right away and do your blood bullets, you'll actually take no damage. It's a neat little, um, tid neat little, uh, feature. Alright, so switch over to Flame Sprayer. Now, spiders take as much patience as a normal no hit run, just. Hey, Archbobs! You just gotta wait, kinda just lure them out one by one. Was the Kirk Hammer run? Oh, provide so long as I don't, we don't get like horrendous RNG. We actually should uh, one cycle this too. Again, keep an eye on your blood bullet count. Also, if you're uh, making blood bullets, make sure you're pretty far away from the spiders because they're pretty quick when they uh, jump, and they can. I actually had have lost a run to like making blood bullets and them just jumping on me because they were too close. Oreos and hot sauce? I can- I could have told you right away that that was a bad plan. Okay, so... Okay, so that four more spiders left. Looking good. Of my eye. Okay, so with Rom. We want to get to her side, and you want to stand in this little... You see this little crevice here? You want to stand here, shoot once, and she notice that she backed up. You want to make sure you return back to her side if she backs up, and then you start spamming away. And it's very important to stand directly in that specific spot, because as you saw when she started teleporting, she kind of like slid me, she kind of pushed me to her side, and then we were able to hit her other side and thus stagger her. I learned recently that if you stand in like the incorrect position, you'll kind of get like hooked onto her and aren't able to reach her other side, and then she doesn't stagger. Thank you for the GG. So as long as you stand there and spam away, you should be fine. Okay.
Alright, so there's the amygdala again. Technically, I guess if you were to get grabbed again by some fluke, you it wouldn't count as a hit because you would still go to the lecture hall, but don't do that. So, we're gonna take him out. I like killing these guys because they can actually follow you down the stairs. Some, most of the time they don't, but they can. And we don't want them attacking us while we take out this guy over here. Get frenzy cold blood. Go past him. Augur. We don't need this lamp, so we're not getting it. And use a blue elixir. I like going up here because the gun can't reach you up here. No need to get those bolt paper there. Okay, so right about now we'll use another blue. Pick this up. So right about here I start jogging, and then as soon as I see the beam I start running. And that's how I time going through here. Alright, we're gonna go back to the dream to uh, upgrade our flame sprayer and level up. Probably would still want to dump your insight just to be safe. Although, not gonna need, you don't really need insight for much. Welcome. Okay, so I'll level welcome. up again. 58. Farewell. Ooh. Okay, I actually just remembered that we, uh. Oh shoot, we should still be okay. So let's put the pungents here, auger, back to the herbal chapel. So we only have one more blue elixir. Okay, I did not like that pungent throw at all. I'm gonna do that again. Okay, and last blue elixir. Keep an eye on the gunman. If he twitches like that, you can just keep going. If he uh, starts aiming, you want to like kind of run past, like run more past him, so that the gunshot misses you, and then go through, go through the corridor.
so my stat loadout is actually different than it normally would be, unlike my all contents. We would have actually have killed emissaries by now, and we would have more arcane power. And I would also usually get the tying to nitrous for this boss fight, which I did not grab. about here we want to have auger, bone marrow ash, and normally we'd have tiny to nitrous but we did not grab it and we don't really need it on any percent. Stay from afar, stay roughly around that uh, pillar there so that if he uh, spits at you, you'll be protected. As you can see, one auger kills these maidens. Just to. Yeah, just so that you don't accidentally line up with a spit. Uh... Okay, good. Okay, bone marrow ash, blood bullets. This we should be able to finish him off. So yeah. Normally I would use like tiny to nitrous to hit the like the butt there, but you can use flame sprayer and bone marrow ash just fine. Up here there is ten bullets that we want to grab. Hey do fish. Silver bullets, good. You make this look so easy. I've spent so much. I spent like well over a year doing this exact run almost every day. Okay. Alright, next up is Mikolash. Since we we have a, the one reborn is the last boss we use flame sprayer on, so we actually don't. If you're only interested in doing any percent, you don't even need to pick up any more materials, and thus we don't need to get those sedatives in that other room there because we're not going to go get the blood rock. Satisfying to fry that bastard, yeah. Hey Anthony, welcome in. Okay. 
so I, I prefer using PNGs for this area. Calm and focus runs, you know it. Okay, stay away from me, please. Actually, a little worried here. Try that. Area is annoying. Hey, welcome in, Purcell. God, I really love the that heart emote thing. Okay, so normally I would like to use a blue elixir here, but I'm just pure any percent. We can't do that, so kind of an RNG spot here where we just hope we don't get hit by this um, this uh, one of these guys when opening up the gate. Thankfully, he did not aggro. Lethal tries to get the shoulder lining up with the sternum. Yeah, it's, it's still stuck at that. There's a way you can actually, like, mostly bait out a uh, jump attack from him, which is, like, the safest way to deal with, it, with it running past him, but I don't always get that right. Actually, we're on our way to Mikolash. Alright, so we get two blue elixirs here. I'm gonna use one right away, because I do not want to run through this area without one. Don't use a call beyond now. Nah, we do not. For any percent, all we use is auger and executioner gloves. Bullets ready. Now, uh, that guy's Edgar. Alfred's the one with the mutton chops who gives you like fire paper. Okay, so we're gonna use we use execution gloves on the skeletons. These guys are the skeletons are like the actual issue of this boss fight, not really Mikolash. The fire ant paper NPC. That's what he gets reduced to on no hit runs. That's you just you're there to get his fire paper. There's six bullets right here, thankfully. So this one Finish it off with the flame sprayer. Okay, I do not like. I don't like this at all. He's literally in the worst possible spot. Dear God. Blood cocktail, it doesn't. It, they, they're not attracted to them. See, this is why I hate these things. Like, they're even more annoying with Arcane. Oh, I forgot I had the gun on. Okay, good. Bray would have done the trick there? Yes, I we don't have that. Oh, 
We're actually running low on vi on vials, but we'll be okay. Okay, I don't I don't like that he did that. Normally we'd be paying him from the uh, in that big room, but he decided to come out, so we're gonna have to have backup steps and come down here. Okay, that killed through so many bullets. Oh, majestic! A hunter is a hunter, even if I... Okay. Pick this up. Okay, so thankfully we've got... Maybe keep an eye behind you, make sure you're not being followed by one of the attendants, because they can follow you up here. Well, at least you guys can see what happens if um, he comes out of the room. Normally you just ping him into that, in that big room with the other skeletons, and you just stay in the doorway, and it's fine. So, the rest of the fight is going to just be, um, from up here. Like, literally the only way you can mess this up is if you, uh, walk off. So just don't do that. Wait until wait until the cutscene ends before you jump down. Majestic, yeah. There's some cold blood that I'm just gonna nab real quick. So definitely want to go back to the dream because we have no more vials. We go from w one reborn directly to Mikolash to save time, and it works, but it it's you start you only have like barely enough materials. Can you have kale for dinner? I might, maybe. Get more bullets and vials. Never tried kale? I really, I love it. It just tastes delicious to me. Okay, final level up. Up is wet nurse. Even know what kale is? Eh, look it up. It's some kind of. I guess it's a vegetable. I don't know. It's it's some kind of plant. So I still have only have one more blue elixir, and I'm gonna use that. Hmm. How do I want to use that? Okay. 
good. All that stuff, yeah. So I'm gonna actually use the blue elixir here. timing. It's really good to add into stir fry. It just soaks with flavor when you cook it and adds texture. Yeah. Also welcome in CC. All right, so right up next is wet nurse. And we're just gonna ping her from afar with executioner gloves. It's really the only danger in this fight is nightmare phase and you just gotta time that as soon as you like start seeing purple. You obviously you don't want to like spam like completely. You want to make sure you don't start casting right as when she's about to do a lunge attack. So I usually wait to see if she's walking before I uh, do anything. Here's the nightmare phase. Stagger. And that's and that's how you do an any percent with arcane. Wait till I get to the dream. I'm curious to see how long that took. Thank you guys for the GGs, and yeah, that was that was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I'm glad it turned out to also be a zero hit. That just looks that just looks cooler when you can do that in a guide. Let me just see here. So yeah, and it's only only took like an hour forty seven minutes, which is when you consider the fact that we had to go into Mohammedtrano Lane. This is that was actually pretty good. But yeah, that can be a decently f a decentish um, quick run. I hope that was actually informative and I covered everything I needed to. I will um, upload this to YouTube and give it to the people who really wanted it. 173 hours somewhere. <laughs>